Haha, <laughs> how's it going bros? It's me, I'm back with unboxing number six. Oh yeah, here we go. There's no time to waste, it's been a while, so let's just jump into it. Stan, please knife me. Thank you, sir. Well, if you're new to the channel, this is my unboxing series, episode number six. If you'd like to watch the other five, I encourage you to do so, but you don't have to. Basically, I take in animals that people can't keep. If you have to rehome your animal, you just go to emeraldscales.com, click the rehome button, and it walks you through the steps to send me your animal. From there, I unbox them. We then spend as much time as is necessary to make sure they are happy and healthy, and when they are, they get listed onto Emerald Scales, where anyone in the USA can actually place an order on an animal. Stan is now in the danger zone, so he's gonna go back here, and I'm gonna trust that he knows what heights are and how he does, in fact, take fall damage. And so, in the end, the goal is to make sure that every animal ultimately gets to a home that it is safe and sound in. We've taken in over 500 so far, so here is to many more. Hello? Anyone in there? So to start off, this package is coming from Joseph in Florida with three animals. So he didn't actually give a reason as to why he rehomed, which is normal. Lots of people don't. I'm going to start with this leopard gecko because why does he look like this? I just, we're continuing this series after a year and we have to start with one of the ugliest leopard geckos I've ever seen. Why is his head? So big, is he okay? His head is so big, it's like he's having trouble opening his eyes. It doesn't look like a tomb or anything, it just looks like a really chunky, meaty head. Yeah, it's just a skull, because leopard geckos can get tumors behind their eyes. It's just his skull. It's just huge. This is the true definition of a big brain. He looks all right other than that. He's a, a tiny bit thin if I want to nitpick, but ultimately, he's just straight up ugly and he had to ruin this video. He, he doesn't want to go back in the tub, but... It's probably because you can see his ugliness in the reflection. <laughs> this one, however, it's like when you have twins and one happens to be six foot while the other one is five feet. This is the nice twin. This is the six foot boy, or should I say the, the nine incher? Because he might actually be nine inches. Anyway, I'll, I'm gonna cut that out. It actually is though, they look almost identical. He's got lighter spots, but this has a normal shaped head. He's actually a nicer weight. He looks healthier overall. He, he, she, forgive me. Is this one a she? Okay, actually the first one's male and this one's female, so whatever, my twin analogy doesn't work. I feel like I should move the sharp object. Where did it go? Why is it running? Why are you running? On the bright side, the ugly one isn't so scared. Can't get it open. You guys told me about these new inventions called box cutters, so... The question is just how do I use it to get this out? I'm gonna actually lose my finger. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. I'm not gonna lie, it's not a joke. I've never used a box cutter. Ooh, ooh, it cuts. It's not even a box. I forgot Stan was there for a second. I thought I was gonna look back and he was gonna be in a different dimension. We're going in. Woo! Hello. It's a bearded dragon. Um. Yeah. He smells kind of like butt, but uh, he looks fine. Bearded dragon. Okay, moving on. Well, we started big. Now let's go small. Perfection. Perfect. Oh wait, I can just slide it. It's sharp. <laughs> That's how cavemen use their black and decker tools. They just, no electricity, no problem. Just slide them. That wasn't funny. This one's coming from Poyala. Poyala? Poyala? Poyala. Po it literally says Poyala in Washington. Also known as Quack. Hello. 
See, I wasn't sure what I should do for the intro for this video. At first, I was gonna use the Universal theme song because it's like, oh, a grand opening, we're back. But that would definitely get claimed by UMG. I will personally sue your a uh, Then I was gonna do this one instead, but I thought that one might just be a little, a little bit, a little bit too loud. Ah! I can't get it out. They actually stuffed this thing well. Oh, that is some green drop beans. My leopard gecko has not been eating. We took her to the vet and they couldn't find anything wrong with her. They advised us to start her on carnivore critical care and we did, but she's still not interested in bugs. In the pictures, she actually looks completely fine. Here's the thing, there's many reasons your gecko might not eat. I think I even did a video about it. And sure, if we literally try to do like an online unlicensed veterinary clinic where we answer questions, it's possible we could figure out solutions, but some people are just ready to hand it over to someone else. I guess that's why it smells so bad because it's just been eating powder, which is fine, it's healthy powder. It's made for emergencies. The thing is this gecko is not very thin. It actually looks a little bit heavier than the ugly one that we just saw. But the, <laughs> but the only issue I see is that it's completely coated in its own poop because it, it went diarrhea, okay? I don't know how else to say it. So I'm guessing the reason this is so gross, it could be because it's sick, it could also just be because it was on carnival care. So first thing I'll do is just get it into a good enclosure, watch it for like a week, see if it wants mealworms, waxworms, dubia roaches, and crickets, whatever. And then if it still doesn't eat and if it shows other signs, I can then seek out an actual vet. But overall, it's a cute gecko and that's what's important. But the pictures, it looked healthy enough to ship and it looks just fine here. I don't want to put it back in this. And that light went out. Gosh, diggity darn. She's just gonna chill right here. She's like, oh god, not again. I'll go ahead and set these up and then come back. So one of these, I'll be honest, I'm actually pretty anxious about opening um, because not all the animals were in perfect condition, but we decided to ship anyway. Um, I think it was the best option, we'll see. But as a warm up, let's just open this simple one. <laughs> Imagine you hear that above you. It's like an earthquake, but reverse. That's scary. I was thinking about it earlier, like when you Google go herping, you instantly get go herping unbox. Do they use medical tape for this? That is pretty clever. They used medical grade gauze tape to put the heat pack on. And look at how strong that is. That is pretty big brain. I might start recommending that. Thank you, Joshua. But yeah, that was like, well, okay, it's a lot better than a lot of things I could be known as. I could have been known as the the kid that pees in the woods. I'm not peeing. I could have been known as the guy that harasses minimum wage employees. Uh, I was just calling to ask where you get your reptiles from, like what breeder? Oh, um. <clears throat> or you could go way back on my channel and I could have been the kid that swims in Petco dumpsters. No notes, none of these have had notes yet. <laughs> he used the medical grade gauze tape backing as padding. Well, there's no context on this, but it's a pretty corn snake. He's actually pretty grumpy. And no matter how small they are, it's always a little scary knowing you might get bit. It, it probably won't even feel like anything, but let's find out. Oh, he's fine. He's cute. Okay, so Joshua actually waited an insanely long time. He originally contacted us in June of 2019, which is almost two years ago. So he just ended up waiting quite a long time. We were ready to take the snake in, but then he was like kind of ready to ship once we paused shipments, but he didn't give a reason. He bought her December 2018, six months later asked to rehome, and then waited two years to rehome her. All right, I mean, I can't complain because a lot of people that do that, they're gonna neglect the animal while they're waiting, but he did not. So thank you, Joshua, for being a good boy. And your snake is a good girl. Why does that sound creepy? Uh, however, she has to go back in this deli container. She was so chill when I took her out and now she's upset again. It's temporary, I promise. Everything is, everything is temporary. Okay, let's stop putting it off. Let's do the one I'm actually unironically scared. It's hard to be serious in these videos, but this one has one, two, three, four, five, six animals in it. And it's it has three, yeah, three species I've literally never gotten. We've gotten in over 500 animals of over 100 species, 
and yet this single box has three that I've never seen sent to us. But I'm still using my tool. I'm being all delicate as if it hasn't just been like in a plane from New York. It's weird. Their address is almost the same as mine, just in a different state. All right, let's see here. We've got a note, the first note of the video. Thank you so much for providing. This is hard to read, okay? The reason why I cannot take care of them anymore is because I'm not a bad reader, I'm just a bad looker, is because I am going to college out of state. <laughs> so basically, um, he was going to college. That's probably the second most common reason people rehome, and he has his whole collection. However, his mom, she, according to him, she left his window open in his room where the animals were. And basically the room got extremely cold overnight and nobody realized that the animals were about to basically freeze. And so this actually killed his sand boa that he was also, oh God, that, oh God, okay. That he was also gonna send and it almost killed his chameleon who is not looking great, <laughs> I will admit. So basically what happened with the chameleon is the sand boa just froze and died. The chameleon, he said, fell about five feet after nearly freezing to death, but it ended up kind of reviving, not reviving, but not completely dying. But he said it will not open its eyes. He said it is eating, but it's not, of course it started shedding in the box. Oh boy, oh boy. So this is the first ever chameleon. People ask so much. Why do you never have chameleons? There's no particular reason. People just never send them. I don't know why. I think partially they're so sen- Oh man. <laughs> they're such sensitive and That was an anxious laugh, by the way, not a funny laugh. Um, they're so sensitive that I think if you do something wrong, they kind of just die and you can't really rehome them. So finally, of course, we have a chameleon. It's a panther, ch panther chameleon. It's beautiful. It's extremely bright colored. It honestly, it might be hard to tell that like that it's actually alive. Um, it's all the white stuff is just shed. This is actually my first time handling a panther chameleon as well. It's not even gripping onto me. It's so weak, but he's right about it not opening its eyes. That's so weird. It's moving its eyes though. It's like, it's trying to look. It's starting to grip on. It's very slow. It's some stressful times, I'll be honest. Okay, let's check on the others. I got a one, two, three. Oh my God, these are kind of cute. Four, cool, and five. All the other animals, I, I can't see this one, but they actually all look okay, aside from the other one. So Arnold, like I said, there's something wrong with his eyes. That's a chameleon. He just started shedding yesterday. Yeah, so he, he couldn't really shed in the box. If I knew it was shedding, I might not have had him ship yet, but on a positive note of this box, there are two more species that I've never gotten in an unboxing. Um, or to emerald scales, and they're amphibians, which we almost never see. And this little fire belly toad, you can get these things for literally just a couple dollars. I'm not gonna take them out. Um, he didn't add any moisture to the paper towel, unless it dried up that quickly, but they're cute. I've never seen a, a fire belly toad this close. I've seen them at stores or whatever. I've seen them at expos, but they're so, he looks like a disease. He looks like that disease that Gary the snail got in SpongeBob. He looks fine though. I mean, he needs some moisture. Perfectly healthy looking. The firebelly toad is named Sandwich. He eats anything you put in front of him. And the other ones, I what are these? Smooth-sided toads. I've heard the name. I've never actually looked at them before. Since they're toads and my hands are clean, let's pick them up. Whoa, they're so light. Have you seen these? I've never seen these before. He just projectile peed. Did you see it? He just went and then peed. <laughs> that one's a little smaller, All right? They have no names. I'm sure this seems hypocritical because, oh, you should research your animal days, weeks, or months before getting it. I don't know a thing about these things. I don't know how to keep them alive. I would argue I've had enough amphibians that it should be pretty easy, but I'll, I'll check it out online and actually make sure I know what I'm doing. Crusty Gecko, I'll be honest, I don't feel like handling it. It's pretty though, it's very yellow. It looks like a banana but like slightly rotten. The Crested Echo is named Tortellini. It eats Pangea and any insects. So we've got Sandwich, Tortellini, Arnold, and one more animal. Ooh, this is a Wilbur, Wilburg, I think it says. And it's a piebald ball python. So basically a piebald means that it, as I, as I describe it, it's like a printer running out of ink. Um, you've got a little bit of ink left and then the rest is just white. 
Ball Python morphs aren't something I'm passionate about really anymore. But yeah, it just looks like a very pretty, very healthy new smell. What is the Crested Gecko doing? Crested Gecko is doing literally, literally, lit, literally, 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 literally backflips in its tub. Um, and the Ball Python is just, why'd I smell it twice? I know I smell animals sometimes, but for some reason I had the urge to smell this one twice. What? Maybe he's having a panic attack and I'm making fun of this anxiety disorder. You just have to say that you're fine. Thank you, Wilberg. Very cool. Back in the bag, Abu. Which one's next? This one should be nice and uh, simple, hopefully. Um, this one's coming from Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. So actually only a few hours, but still easier to ship and it's cheaper as well. <laughs> They printed on a massive Lacey X sticker. Wait, I have an idea. Cause you see, you've always got a box cutter, but who has an electric box cutter? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah! I'm going to Shark Tank. I'm going to be a billionaire. Too optimistic. I'm out. Worked like a charm. That worked even better. It's like a really big handle for it. Why am I allowed to do these things? There are so many hard hitting questions. Why are there no notes? What does this say? Love big. Play hard. Eat dessert. Sim simple things. Don't worry. Rest. Why do you need motivational messages on your paper towels? Morning is a new opportunity to shine. A chance to give the past a kick in the pants. And the future, a bear hug. Something about having motivational messages on paper towel depresses me. Why are these in bags? Why did they put the geckos in bags? I am confused. Did I pack this? Did I send them bags back? <laughs> okay, I shipped out a lot of these boxes. This might actually be my fault. They're both, they're both fine, I think. What is this? They gave me a drill bit. What? There's, a, there's literally a drill bit in here. This is not mine. How do you accidentally put a drill bit in the box you're sending a reptile company? What were they doing to this box? Oh, they drilled holes in it and the bit went through and they just, they were like, I don't feel like unboxing this. <laughs> he just gets the drill bit. Thank you. Very cool. I can't believe I sent them bags by accident. Some people do ship leopard geckos in bags. It's probably fine. It just seems kind of weird. Ah! It just ran out my arm. I just got jump scared by a leopard gecko of all things. It really doesn't want to be in this bag. Let me move the sharp objects because it's gonna run. Come on, boy. Come on, you can do it. You're running the wrong way. Okay. I got him. <laughs> okay, that one's freaking out too. We're gonna do one at a time. This one, it looks good. Great, let's move on. Okay, I need to, something to put it in. The bad news is we now have to open the second one. It's ready to go though, it's right at the opening. They double tied the other knot, but they single tied this one. I guess they didn't care about this one as much. Oh, this one's pretty. Looks like Goldie. Hello. This is a patternless. Why are they so similar in temperament? Wow, it's so soft. Wow, it feels like velvet. I don't know what velvet feels like, but whenever someone says something soft, they say it feels like velvet. So he feels like velvet. Let me see your butt. Okay, it's a boy. Thank you. No homo. Okay, this one's calmer. It's instantly my favorite because of that. It's super pretty, beautiful condition. The question is, why did they rehaul? Or is it a mystery forever? Oh, they said this one's female. Wait, did I look wrong? No, this one's a male. We got them from PetSmart as an impulse buy. Uh, my husband and I enjoy your YouTube videos and are very grateful your company exists. It sounds like they might have just regretted it, impulse buy. Sorry for sending me bags, but they both arrived safe and sound. Next up, this one is a mystery. A, because I don't know what the scientific name means, and B, because I cannot pronounce it, so you will not know either. Let's open it. Lampropeltis Jetula Negrita. Also, all the packaging has been really good today. I have no complaints so far. 
Um, the chameleon and stuff, they were definitely packed very closely together. Ultimately though, great job everyone. Round of applause, please. Applaud, please. Applaud. You're not like, I don't care where, are you on the bus? Applaud. Are you in class? Applaud. On the toilet? Everyone in every room should be able to hear you applauding right now. Thank you. Look at this clean opening. My SD card filled up and I honestly have no idea what I was saying, but it was probably irrelevant and unimportant. So, let's see what's in this box. I don't know what this is. I think it's a snake. Yeah, it's a snake. By the way they tied this, I feel like it could be venomous. Oh yeah. Should I just reach my hand? I'm tempted to just reach my hand in. It's, it's, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's do this. Oh, it's, okay, it's a Mexican black king snake. Uh, they're quite pretty. They're jet black and Mexican. It's a king snake. I've never handled one of these either. This is a brand new species as well. So we got the panther chameleon, the toads, the fire belly, yeah, the toad, toads. And this, it's so smooth and shiny, wow. It's quite pretty. Mexican black king snake, everyone. Okay, now it's fine. See, now that it's out of the bag, it doesn't really mind. Snip dust. Smells fine. It's seriously, like smell your reptile. If something smells weird, there's probably something wrong. Amphibians, however, are kind of a different story. They're a little stinky sometimes. And it's, and wait, have we gotten one of these? This might be another new species as well. All right, this one. They had fun in Word. Look at this, it's so fancy. Hi Alex, nice to meet you. My name is Wasabi. My former person liked me a lot, but she is just old and boring now. I still, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, the owner is old and boring and I still have a lot of years left in me, hopefully to spend with someone young and vibrant and hopefully with nice strong hands. I don't know if we're offering the services you think we do. It's actually interesting. I, there's been a handful of animals um, rehomed by people who are either like aged, gotten old, and their health is just to the point where they can no longer keep the animals. Um, it's very bittersweet because some people, they did this like all this wonderful care with the animal and they truly just, their health is not good enough. They can't get up as often. They have to, I don't know, sleep more. They maybe have their own care as a person. I don't know if this is the case with this person. I, it sounds different, but um, yeah, they literally, they're just retiring or they know that they're nearing the end of their life and they have to find the animals new homes. Something I really never thought about until doing Emerald Scales. Like, oh yeah, people get old too. And the human, like the animal can't outlive the person. Let's see if it's friendly. Okay, I think it is. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think we've gotten any of these. It looks, huh, it looked kind of like a sand boa slept with a corn snake or a yellow rat snake maybe, because it's got the, the stripes. Very pretty, looks like it was cared for very well. I don't know if I would keep one, but I have a feeling there will be high demand for this dude. The great thing about the high demand animals is I can be even more picky about who it goes to. That's that, that's the final animal and unboxing episode six that arrived today. I hope you enjoyed, uh, it was fun. Hopefully it held up to your expectations. I never know what, <laughs> what the unboxings will quite be like. I really miss doing the unboxing videos. By far my favorite. And now that I own a house, now that I've got time and space and money, thanks to you watching these videos and buying my merch and supporting me on Patreon, um, I'll be able to do these a lot more consistently. But that will be it. You can check out the five other unboxing videos. Uh, thanks for your support. I appreciate it. That'd be it for this video. I'm Alex. And thanks for watching.